G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, it's time for another Banggood review. And this is what we're going to look at. It's a really cheap product, cheap to buy. I don't know how good it's going to be. And it's a matter of uh, what's in the box. So I'll show you some screen prints of what is in the box or supposed to be in the box and we can go from there. Okay, well now this arbor comes in two flavours from Banggood. They've got the $7.58 Australian version and they've got the $5 Australian version. Now that equates to $6 USA or $4 USA. The cheaper version, you just get the arbor, you don't get a cutting disc. Um, I just ordered the first one I saw and it came with a cutting disc. But you know, for four bucks, the uh, for four bucks American or five dollars Australian, the Arbor is, and it's uh, little pressure plates and that is, is pretty cheap buying. So we'll open up the box and see what's in there. So what do you get? What do you get? A little pin wrench, uh, open ended spanner, the Arbor mounting shaft, and two mandrels, which basically are the pressure plates that go either side of the of the grinding or cutting disc or maybe even a wire buff. Now the reason I actually spotted this and asked to do a review is because when I reviewed the uh, the Hilda 400 watt die grinder I showed you in a couple of the videos how you can cut steel with it and you can grind and you can even mount them as a tool post grinder but the problem with them is that with the Hilders you only get the Dremel set of tooling and accessories and that only takes the tiny little Dremel discs. Now in the video I showed how you can use the 75mm disc that has a 10mm centre and the, and the Hilda drives that very easily. I mean a Dremel wouldn't drive this very well at all but the Hilda does. The problem being though that you can't buy a, a 10mm centred arbor with a 6mm shaft to fit the Hilda or any of these um, second size up air die grinders. So I looked on Banggood and the only thing that they had was this set and once again this will not fit the Hilda because the shank is too big a diameter but it's, a, it's certainly a candidate for turning down the shank it'll be a very easy job because it's got a it's got a centre mark in the end you could support it and then just spin it down with the, with a small lathe, which is what I will do probably in a following video. Now, uh, the beauty of this is that it will take any of the uh, grinding and cutting discs that have got the the regular centre, which is I think it's a hundred. I think it's um, I think it's sixteen mil from memory. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's 16. So these are the same discs as these that go on your regular 100 and 110 uh, angle grinder. So, you know, whether or not you've got an angle grinder and you just, or whether you want to use up the stubs, I mean, the beauty of this sort of an arbor is you can also use up all your old leftovers, you know. So you've got all these bits and pieces which are left over that you could dry with your with your Hilda or your electric drill to do fiddly jobs. I mean, these are quite okay to use on a tool post grinder. And, uh, well, free cutting discs. So, is this any good? Well, let's come in close and have a look at it. The first thing you notice is that it's got three flats on it, which is the same setup that they have on uh, those drives you can buy for a half inch or whatever size 
socket set so you can drive sockets in your drill. I've got one of those, I actually made my own many years ago, but you can buy them like that now. So the three flats basically mate with the three jaws in the drill chuck and it stops, uh, eliminates any chance of the, uh, the arbor turning in the chuck, which is going to save your chuck jaws of course and keep everything nice and rigid. The actual quality looks quite good. This has got uh, the standard set up with a dog on the back which engages with the spanner, the spanner mount, the mounting point which is here. And then of course your disc goes on like so and you can then just pull up on it with the, the screw down. Um, yeah, everything seems to be good and uh, fitting well. And then it's just a matter of nip it up with a little pin wrench. She's good to go, so now you're good to stick that in the electric drill and uh, get working. So, I mean, if you've got a thicker disc, such as this style, well then you flip the uh, you flip the, the outer mantle around so that it then goes into the centre. So in this case you would then, whoops, put it on like that. You can see it's only going in half the depth, so instead of going that way, you'd put it on that way. So it's then supporting into the throat of the, of the disc. And that comes up nice and flush, so it's made correctly. Um, there's enough thread there. All in all, yeah, it's a nice unit. I think that would be great. It looks to be good quality steel. Now, with this, as I said, I was wondering whether this would actually fit the, the Hilda. Obviously, using these sort of discs in electric drill, it won't spin anywhere near as fast as an angle grinder. Angle grinder is going to be spinning at 10,000 RPM. That's the, pretty much the norm. Electric drill, the, the fastest speed you're going to get is about 3,000 RPM, which is okay because you're using these unshielded, and that's a safety factor. I mean, you've got to take precautions when you ever use anything unshielded, stay away from the line of fire, and wear all the safety gear, of course. But, I mean, it can be handy at times. And as I said, if you don't have an angle grinder, well, this will help you out to do angle grinder sort of jobs for just a few bucks. Now, will it take the, the smaller 75mm disc? Now, in the figures, they say it's got a 10mm centre, Let's measure it and see. 9.93. Okay. Now, the 75mm disc centre is actually, I think, slightly under that. 9.46, 9.48. So, they won't go over the, the outer centre without forcing and you never want to force a disc because that's a good way to crack it, weaken it. These are heavily fibre reinforced as you can see. So is this type of stone. But this type of stone is not reinforced at all. Okay, you can see the difference. This has got the webbing. This has not got the webbing. This has got the webbing. This is a lot more likely to shatter than this type of stone. But treated with respect, you shouldn't have a, a stone shattering. I've never Never ever had one let go in all the years of using angle grinders. Now, so for the sake of the exercise, if you want to use these discs, you can do it, but you would have to either machine that that back on the face to get a flat finish and then 
sit over on the thread, which I which I don't like. And that one pull up on it. Or you would machine up a a completely uh, new uh, pressure plate. Machine that down slightly, and then you'd be able to put put these on. It would mean that then it would be ever so slightly loose on that, but I don't think it would be enough to worry you about, so I think you could actually machine this back. Of course, you're going to have to machine back, the, as I said, the shank to 6mm. At the moment, these are 10mm shank. And these will fit a 13mm mil, maximum uh, or a 10mm maximum chuck. 10 mils are a bit uncommon, but a 13 mil, very common size chuck. And of course, anything bigger than that, but 13 mil is pretty much the, the go for chuck on most power drills these days. The thread is standard 8 mil metric, so you can easily put a metric nut on if you want to play around with these, modify the fittings, and Course you could put a nylon type lock nut on there if you want to be doubly secure and use different face plates. Here it is in my well worn 500 watt AEG drill, my favourite, very favourite drill out of about a dozen or so I've got. And as you can see, there's no run out. Perfect, really well made, really well made. Let's put a disc on it and just see how it uh, how it spins with the with the mandrels on. Okay, let's try it with a with a thick grinding disc. Seems all right. Let's try it with a thin dry, a thin grinding disc. Run out's not no problem there. That's okay. And let's try it with the cutting disc they supplied. Bit of a weave there. That could be the disc. Or, yeah, I think it could be the. I think it's this end. End thread's not perfect. You can see it weaving around. That's the way it's pulling up on the thread. Let's take the disc out and have a look. Screw this up. See how everything aligns. I mean, you often get run out in these discs. They're, you know, they're not all perfect. And you can see that's got a weave in it. That's not perfect, by a long stretch. Pull it up the other way. But you've got to remember though that these pull up on the, against the faces. Uh, screwing it up like this onto the centre section of the thread could actually twist slightly because there's a certain amount of slot in any thread so the thread will pull up in relationship to the to the face now it could be that the this face on the inside which doesn't actually shouldn't normally come into contact with the other face is causing the the weave with nothing on it so basically 
it's a bit of an unfair test this how it performs with a disc is the important thing normally they wouldn't pull up together like that but it shows you any imperfection and there is an imperfection there but as I said that, you, that could happen on any angle grinder really I think you'll find so I wouldn't be too concerned about that the way the discs spin as far as run out is the critical point and they all went okay so I don't think it's any big deal Certainly the shaft itself is good. So yeah, a little, little bit of looseness in there which allows it to, uh, to uh, weave against uh, the centres, but also they pro probably do it that way so that it can actually pull up um, against the, the side of the disc flush. I mean, after all, it's, it's this area here which really determines how accurately the, the disc is going to spin now I'll give you an example, I'll show you a disc, this, which is a really poorly made disc, and then we'll, see what, then we'll see what weave is all about. So I'll put this back together. This will demonstrate exactly how much effect the disc itself has. This is a brand new disc. It had a price tag on it, which was like 75 cents, which just fell off a minute ago. So we'll put this on here and I'll show you exactly what these sort of adapters have to contend with. Alright, this will make you a day. Show you the sort of rubbish that is being sold out there. I don't know where I got this from, but it's a, it's a, about as crappy a grindy disc as you'll ever see. Check this out. Now that's the disc. As you can see, it's, it's pulling up square on the back here. The actual uh, pressure plate on the outside is just following the, the contour of the disc. So there you go. At the end of the day, I think this is quite okay. And as you saw, it spun the other discs quite okay, including the El Cheapo GMC, which is in itself is a pretty rubbishy product. And it went fine, so... I think it's good. I think for the money it's, it's as good as you could hope for and it will certainly do the job. And yeah, well, I might even get a couple more of them and play around with them. Certainly I'm going to turn this one down so that it will fit in the 6mm chuck on the Hilda. And I think it'll still be plenty strong enough. And yeah, then you can run discs in the Hilda. I wouldn't be running this size disc, that is way too big. But you can run all your leftover bits and pieces and, you know, at, at, and just use them on the tool post grinder or whatever and, yeah, save money. All right, that's it for me. Yep, I think it's okay. And, uh, yeah, I think I'll probably pick a couple more of these up. Okay, that's it. See you next time. Cheers.